I am loving your outfit. What? Oh my gosh. Yo, where did you get those kicks? Oh my gosh. Those are fire. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Those are fire. I, um, I think they're called very real well. I, I can't even tell you. How do you say these shoes? The Wave. The Wave. Oh my gosh. The Wave. And he, what you really should know that is that this is a vintage 1996 um, Gucci designed by Tom Ford. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're all vintage today. <laughs> except for the shoes. Well, you've got some great friends to help you out with that jacket. I'm really feeling your outfit. Again, thank you so much for your Time. Um, I wanted to ask about this show, about everyone's approach to the show. I feel like I'm one of the few people who was like living under a rock. I didn't see the documentary. So knowing that this is a true story, having seen all that footage, how did that affect everyone's like approach to this topic and uh, approaching their roles? Everybody, uh, everybody had their own approach to it. Uh, I know Colin talked about he would just have the documentary just playing in the background all the time to kind of let it sink in his. But of course, he's uh, you know Michael Peterson was such a character, like the the way that he spoke and he's so, such a such a strange guy, right? So uh, I definitely approach it. Watch a lot of the documentary. Watch. Uh, Court TV had the full the full thing, so you could watch every single moment of the trial. I wouldn't recommend it; it's pretty boring. Uh, but so, I mean, that's obviously the entry point. But the the scripted version does explore so much more of the things that we didn't really know about, right? So, um, thankfully, the uh, it was tremendous writing, and it allowed us as actors to to really see how we would have embodied that moment in such a difficult time. You know, so I play uh, one of his defense attorneys, and um, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, when I first watched it, I was like, that man's guilty. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna like defend this man, but uh, Tom uh, Maher, it, the, the character that I was with, the real life person, like the way that he approached it was the way that I tried to approach it, which is he's defending more than Michael Peterson. He's defending the system, right? He he does the job of making sure that the state proves beyond a reasonable doubt, which of course they don't believe happened in this case, uh, because of the abuses that can happen so easily and have happened within the American justice system, right? And and what we come to find out actually happened in this case. Whether you think he's guilty or not, you know, for the medical examiner to exclude evidence and to make the, you're, you're just like, listen, just because you think you're on the side of right doesn't mean that you have the liberty to change things or withhold things. And so that, that's what is so exciting about how this story plays out is because it really does call into question um, when we're so quick to make it a judgment just based on what we see on TV. Right, right. Were you one of those people that were like enthralled by the Court TV series when it was on air? Well, uh, my dad was actually a police officer. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Alabama. So he was all about, you know, he didn't really watch the trials, but, you know, after OJ and everything became, you know, we as a nation started caring about what was happening in our court system. Uh, so that he found interesting, of course. Uh, but I, I was more on the art side of things. So it's funny now because I, I, I didn't have any interest in being a lawyer or uh, being a police officer. And it's all I play. It's all I play, which is when people find out my name is Justice, they think that I'm a lawyer. Or when they find out my dad was a police officer, they're like, oh, that makes sense. So I was like, yeah, I guess it does. Yeah. Yeah. You might be able to help me out with some uh, inside information. Right? There you go. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Oh. It's the Alzheimer's Association. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I'm taking care of my mother. She has an early onset 
Alzheimer's called posterior cortical atrophy, which is a rare form that causes her to go blind, but not in the traditional sense of just things going black. It's her brain is misinterpreting the information, so she's moving into like a psychedelic landscape. It's, it's horrible. Um, Thank you. But unfortunately, you probably know this, there is no cure for Alzheimer's, but I discovered that giving her some natural medications like psilocybin mushrooms actually increased her cognition. She went from getting lost in the house, stuttering her speech to the next day after mushrooms, singing in the kitchen and baking two batches of banana bread. So, I've been doing a documentary over the last three years documenting our experience and working with the Alzheimer's Association to let people know that there is some hope. Thank you for sharing. That. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. Thank you. I'm going to add your mom to my prayers and I really appreciate it. What are some of your like your favorite? Check it out. Yeah. Scared money make less of it. Don't ever let the chance pass you by. Just keep your eye up on the prizes. Life keeps spinning these rules, I break them. Life keeps spinning them risks, I take them. Run way to a bag. Thought you in the way, but I flew by. That G6 was in the sky.